Second part of a double feature today. It's Friday. Good to see you guys. My voice is a little raspy, so I'm hoping I could get through this, but I'm showing up for today's episode, so I hope you are as well. You're going to learn a ton of things in this episode. What are we going to talk about today? What is it? We're going to be talking about how to sell digital products online. Now, you guys have heard me before. I'm a big believer in this. Work smarter, not harder. I've also emphasized the importance of presentation and the use of mock-ups. And there are many sites out there that offer incredible mock-ups like Creative Markup, uh, Creative Market, Envato, Yellow Images, and Design Cuts. And when I discovered these sites, it was like stumbling onto a secret treasure that nobody told me about. It was like, oh my God. Well, if we want to learn how to do this, I have the right man for the job. And that's Tom Ross. He's the CEO of Design Cuts. He's looking at his site. And I've seen these bundles. We've purchased many of these bundles. But I was just looking at it again just to refresh myself. And right down there in the lower left corner, you guys see that thing about branding? The branding mock-up? Here's what it comes with. And I'm looking through it. I'm like, oh my God, look at all these resources. From letterhead, business cards, all the different ways that your identity design can touch an image or a product. It's here for you. With different finishes, dark and light backgrounds, gold foiling. And... I was thinking to myself, this looks super pro. This looks way better than I could put it together and much, much easier to do than if I had to do it myself. And it's $49? What? How is this possible? And how have I been doing this the wrong way all along, trying to make it myself? But then I got to think, for $49, this is a marketplace that sells products to other people and somebody's going to make it. Is this, is this exploitive? Is this fair to artists? And can artists even make money selling things like this? And doesn't this cut against their own livelihood? Are they giving away their trade secrets and their most valuable assets by selling digital products online? And once I got over that, I started to think, well, how is it that a person like you can get started in this? Well, I have the man for the job. Tom Ross is on the show and he's the CEO of Design Cuts. He's also the host of the Honest Entrepreneur Show. And oddly enough, he has a Master's of Arts in English Lit from St. Andrews University. That's a little odd to me. Tom Ross, everybody help me welcome him to the show! Woo! Yeah, look at you! Rock the Design Cuts t-shirt right there. Man, I got a point. <laughs> welcome to the show. Now, hey, Chris. Hey, guys. What's up? You guys need to know this. A couple of things up front. I did get to meet the giant of a man named as named Tom Ross in London. We we ran into each other at the train station as we were hurriedly running away from the train station to make our meetup. And Tom's like, hey, Chris, what's up? And there he is. And then you guys went to get some food, right? We did, yeah, and ate super quickly. <laughs> okay, there's another thing. At the end of this program, we're going to show you guys. We're going to give you a special link. Tom is doing us a solid. He set up with an, us with an affiliate program, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We want to get right into it. I think you prepared a presentation for us. Is that right? I have. I have. Okay, yeah. let's. I'm going to turn the show over to you. Maestro, it's all yours. First of all, thank you so much for having me on the show, guys. Like, I'm humbled. I'm honored. I'm super pumped to be here. And I'm really excited to share everything I know about how to sell digital design products or kind of any products really online. This actually was going to be a premium Skillshare course. But when we got talking, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to bring it for free for your audience. I like that. <laughs> Value right away. Yeah. So a um, little bit of backstory, because that's going to make a lot of sense when I get very shortly into the goods, into how to actually do this stuff. But I've been doing design and marketing in tandem since I was age 12. I'm obsessed with both. I freelanced for a decade and got a lot of kind of war stories from all that stuff. And I've launched a ton of online ventures, some successful, some definitely not. There's definitely been some trial and error over the years. And all of that's kind of led me to what I'm doing these days, running design cuts. So uh, I like to push things to extremes. This is from my personal show. And it's basically I hospitalized myself working 100 hour weeks, 18 hour days, getting design cuts off the ground. The reason that's relevant is because I really believe in going that extra mile. And that's something which I want to cover a lot in this show. So um, obviously don't put yourself in hospital, but you're going to see how this loop backs in very mm -hmm, shortly. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm all about providing value. So as you said in the intro, I'm one of the uh, four hosts of the Honest Designers show. I know you had my buddy Dustin on very recently. Yes. You crushed it, right? He did. 
Yeah, so you can see Dustin with his little yellow cap there. That's me second in with the rosy cheeks, and they captured my paleness. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully some people know the show, and we love trying to give back some value to the design community through that. And also, uh, <laughs> this snazzy attire. This is a game show that we put out for our community. A thousand people plus showed up, and we did all these prizes and crates and stuff. And mm -hmm. the point is, I love design and creativity fused with marketing and that's why i love what you guys are doing so much in the future because i believe it's the perfect marriage and again that's super relevant for today because it's how to actually learn how to market these beautiful products and present them in the right way and just make it fun and different and interesting and stand out and that's kind of how we like to do things at design cuts as well as just rocking a snazzy bow tie for the sake of it right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so what do I know about selling digital products? Yeah, what do you know about are. selling digital products, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing, Chris. It's going to be a digital website. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no, I've run Design Cuts for six years. We are one of the biggest marketplaces in the world that sell this kind of stuff, these digital design resources. We have earned millions and millions of dollars for our designer partners, the guys that make these products, which I'm super proud of. And we also collaborate with some of the biggest names in the industry to create original products where we will basically pair up with them and just conceive of an idea, get it out there to market. And our own small handful of products have also sold hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I like to think we know what we're talking about. And we also get such a deep insight into what works and what doesn't, because we work with hundreds of only the best people in the industry. And so it's my job and our company's job to basically pay attention to the patterns of what sells and what doesn't and why. Mm, interesting. Well, I just want to let you know, you have a lot of fans tuning in here. People are like, woo, oh, really? Tom, and there's muscle, muscle, <laughs> clap, design cuts is the best. Yeah, slay Mr. Tom. So a lot of, lot of fans in here already. Amazing. I, I really appreciate it, guys. I can't see the comments right now, um, but everyone who's showing up, I, yeah, means the world, guys. So um, our values at Design Cuts, again, super relevant for what I'm talking about today. Instead of being like a, a kind of a free-for-all where it's like we just accept anything, we basically only work with like, the top 1% of product creators in the world. We're very, very exclusive. It's all like quality over quantity. And so we basically cherry pick uh, the best stuff in the world. And we're all about going the extra mile, which is unscalable as hell. So mm. we will we do stuff which will seem ridiculous to you, Chris. We will literally work with our designers to help them redesign their preview graphics on their products because we know it's going to sell better. Mm -hmm. And we're like tidy up their files ourselves if they're kind of messy to give a nicer customer experience. I see. That kind of, it's not like a day uploader and just it all kind of. It's not free like for that. all. Yeah. Yeah. It's not free for all. There's a lot of internal work, which people don't realize because mm -hmm. we know what works. We know what customers like. And so we work really hands on with our designers to get the best results. Yeah. All of that ties into the tip. So that means if I buy a Design Cuts product, I can be assured that there's a level of quality control that you're putting it through. Yeah, exactly. Like nothing goes out until mm -hmm. it goes through our team. Okay. And our team perfectionists. Nice. So uh, <laughs> I told the team that I was coming on today. And, uh, you know, they, they wanted to be part of it. What can I say? I <laughs> <laughs> love that. Wait a minute. They misspelled the future. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Thank no. you, you guys. Uh, this is me in a heart right there. Boom. I'm going to Justin Bieber it. <laughs> so these yeah, are some of the lovely Beamer. people on our product team. Yeah. These people will literally like hand check every single file, make it all polished and perfect. Wait, wait, wait. And, uh, before you move no. on, before you move on, is yeah, this a mock-up? <laughs> Was that a mock-up? <laughs> Tell me. This is a, this is a homemade mock-up. This is us. Uh, I think the whole uh, it is a mock-up, but it's homemade mock-up. It's a custom <laughs> mock-up. See, <laughs> Matthew, I could tell. We were talking to a mock-up company. Uh, it's like, wait a minute, it looks a little clean there. So they do that for everybody. Is what they're <laughs> yes. they just change out the feature. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! If you like this one, the rest of the team started getting jealous too. So they wanted to get involved. So okay. uh, then this started. This started Aww. happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know why we were late today? I was stuck in hair and makeup, so it's it's all worth it <laughs> for two fans to say I'm so dreamy. <laughs> and then, and then before you know it, you know the marketing manager he's getting involved. So yeah, I, do, I can't control them, but they wanted to be part of it. Love so. it. I love that you involved the team in those mockups. Uh, yeah, for sure, man. So um, some of my favorite moments. This is the stuff I'm the most proud of. 
um, we, you, you mentioned at the start, you know, do the designers benefit? Like, mm-hmm. this is the stuff I love the most. This is part of a wall we have in our office where people like send us photos of themselves wearing our merchandise and that kind of thing. These are some of the designers we work with. And we've earned some folk enough through our platform to send their kids to college. Wow. We've saved some people's houses from getting repossessed, like they were literally going to lose their house. And we've been able to send them the paycheck to keep their house. And so, and, and you know, people quitting their jobs and, and selling products full time because of the income they're making. So that's the stuff where I like, you know, rally around the team and be like, guys, this is impacting people's lives. And I think that's like a lot more interesting than just we sell digital products, you know? Right. So how to actually do it. And this is the big question, right? Because some products earn huge amounts. Some products like single products can earn more than a quarter of a million dollars, which is freaking nuts, right? Mm -hmm. Others earn nothing. And I've become obsessed doing what we do to be like, why the disparity? You know, why, why the difference? Why did some do so incredibly well and others flop? And it's basically our job to figure that out. And that's what I want to teach today. Mm Mm-hmm. Some more love for you, Ray Mazing. Tom is awesome. So much value and such an awesome guy. I think you filled our entire audience with plants from the Honest Podcast or Honest Entrepreneurs Podcast, and you've mobilized the the forces here, if you will. Thank you again. Yeah, I may have mentioned it on my Instagram. You may have mentioned it once or twice. You may. You may. (laughs) Debbie Sementelli saying, oh my God, it's Tom Ross live and such a fan. Okay, you keep doing your thing. (laughs) Okay, <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Um, so the first thing I want to teach is how to pick a winning product idea. Yeah, the three elements you should aim for. Here we go. Which help overcome market saturation, right? Because everyone's mm-hmm. worried it's so noisy. Is it too late for me to get involved? And I, I know um, Dustin when he killed it on the show. You know, he talked about like how to find the products that interest you and that kind of thing. I want to go a little bit deeper as like a next phase to that and give some real studies. Okay, because. I basically talk to some of our top selling designers who make these products and I'm like, do you want to be on the future? They're like, hell yeah, I do, of course. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they basically signed up and gave me some of their products to use as real case studies. Beautiful. So um, also I want to look at why presentation graphics are so key. I know you're a huge mock-up fan, Chris, Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, like how to basically create presentational graphics, preview graphics that sell the hell out of your product. great job at that and also going the extra mile which you probably saw from some of my backstory I'm obsessed with I'm obsessed with avoiding being lazy and seeing like how far you can push stuff and that applies so much with products and all that kind of thing lovely important note these tips go far beyond just digital design products if you're selling anything online please stay tuned because I think these tips are pretty ubiquitous right they apply to anything out there, any types of products you're trying to sell online, these tips can be applied. Mm -hmm. So first of all, got a little Venn diagram for you. So um, these are the three elements, which I really believe make the blockbuster success products, the ones that blow up and are like, you know, the biggest hit of the year kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This seems to be the formula. So first piece is talent, right? It's looking at what you're actually good at. The market is the market demand and then how unique is it? So to break that down a little bit further, talent, what creative skills do you have? Are you an illustrator? Are you a hand letterer? You know, what kind of stuff can you make? What do you care most about? What are you most passionate about? Because you're not gonna be able to sustain making products regularly enough to earn a big income if you just don't care about it. And finally, how can you translate your talents into a digital product? And how can you provide real high quality? Again, that ties back to the expertise, but you're going to have to really deliver the goods. You're going to have to provide something better than what's existing out there. Mm -hmm. Second thing, right, market. Is there a demand for this type of product? And this is huge because you could create something which was stunning, but if no one's out there who wants to buy it, it's going to fall completely flat. So you need to try and figure out how big is the potential market and audience for what you're making and then work out is the intended market overserved or underserved? Are there a bunch of people already catering for them or is there hardly anyone doing it? And then also a final point, will demand maintain over the long term, or will it be something like a seasonal product? So like a Christmas product obviously is just gonna blow up once a year, or will it be a fleeting trend? Or will it be something that endures for like you know decades to come? So these, these points make a lot of sense to me, but how do I find out, how do I answer these questions? Do you have any tips for me? 
Yeah, a hundred percent. So um, I think a lot of it is just research, right? Get out onto marketplaces like ours. And for example, our homepage, it's ordered by most popular. Mm. So you get a live feed every single day. You can go on and pay attention to what's selling. You mm. can go into what's getting the most comments, the most engagement. Um, and, and there are case studies as well. So I'm going to break down in this presentation, like here's specific examples of the type of products to look out for and how you can kind of see if it's underserved or overserved and that mm -hmm. type of thing. Okay. But yeah. Happy to break that down more for sure. Um, and finally, how unique is it? So I believe setting trends always beats following them. It might be a lot harder to set trends, but you always want to try and be that one that everyone else copies rather than just ripping off someone else. Right. And just taking a look at how many similar products exist out there to what you're making how original and different is your product from what's out there and how easily can your product be copied? And the answer is in the current landscape, very, very easily. We see this all the time where particularly on other platforms, someone releases a bestseller and then like the next week, everyone's ripping it off and just creating like a, a lesser rip off version of it. And we deliberately don't sell a lot of those things because we're like trying to respect the original creator. Um, but that's huge, you know, realize you are going to get ripped off. So first mover advantage is massive. You want to try and be the first one there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you're familiar with this product, Chris. I am not. This is uh, from Lisa Glance, a shout out to Lisa. It's the personalized portrait creator. And it basically lets you create your portrait of someone else's digitally, simply by turning layers on and off. It's super easy to what? use. It also happens to be one of the best selling digital products of all time hmm. across all platforms. Huge, hugely successful. And so to break it down a little bit more, have a look at this, right? You can literally build a family. You can create like little girls. It's got so much in there, which I couldn't even pack into this presentation. Endless variations. You can have people with angel wings. You can have like entire families. It's got pets, it's got animals. And you can see here, you can change the hairstyles, like the skin tonality, even the body shapes. like all kinds of stuff is hugely hugely comprehensive right this is one of those products that's doing over two hundred fifty thousand. you said because it's one of your best sellers yeah yeah Ooh. yeah so like incredible product and lisa absolutely <laughs> killed it with matthew so, and i just looked at each other and gave ourselves double eye eyebrow pumps <laughs> like it was like <laughs> whoa whoa oh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> hey, you guys want to release some products <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, oh, wait, hold on. Where's my cash register sound effect? There it is. <laughs> oh my God. There we go. Um, so going back to this, right? Mm -hmm. How does this map? Talent, she's one of the most talented illustrators in the field today. She, she's blowing talent out of the water. So she's crushing that piece. Market, the market demand is massive. It's like not only does every designer seem to want to jump all over this product and love using it, but every photographer does as well. And even people that aren't designers or photographers, are like clamoring just to create their own portraits. So the market is pretty much like everyone everywhere. You know, it really proved even more widespread popular than she realized. And all kinds of audiences she didn't even foresee are trying to get their hands on this thing. So mm -hmm. the market demand huge. And finally, how unique is it? Incredibly unique because there was nothing like this when she made it. So she was the first mover. No one had thought up this crazy idea. And so by moving first, she, she basically won in the unique part as well. And so huge market demand that was underserved because no one else was doing it. And she blew it out of the water with the talent that she put into it. So this is a pretty much perfect example of like how to create a blockbuster product. Yep. And I just want to do a quick thing here because people are loving yeah. the content. They're like, this is going to be gold. I can already tell. You've taken the time to organize this. You know how to speak. You know how to organize information. So I'm just going to warn everybody. Yes, it is being uploaded. It's live streamed and all that stuff. But do yourself a favor so you don't have to work twice as hard. Start screen capturing this. This is very valuable information that Tom's sharing <laughs> with us. Appreciate it, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, Here's a little personal insight because I, I like to keep things super honest. So, um, you know, I mentioned the collaborative products that we do. Yeah. And, and we kind of released them via our brand. Lisa actually approached me with the idea for this product and said, like, do you want to maybe do this as a collaboration? And at the time I was like, you know what? I think it might be too niche. So maybe <laughs> try something out. So I was yeah. like, you just do it on your own. And then it, it blew up and like set the world on fire. And yeah. I've been yeah. kicking myself ever. ever so since. you're saying you have your finger on the pulse of what people want. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, this, was, uh, this was earlier years, yeah. but oh, I see. Like, 
time. But this is why I'm obsessed, right? Because like right. a single kind of wrong move and, and you can miss the boat on stuff. So that's why I'm trying to provide a bit bit more of a system, a bit more of a structure for, for how to actually think about this. Yeah. Thing. Okay. But yeah. That that was a stupid move, basically, on my part. Well, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? You can't predict the future looking backwards. It doesn't work course, like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this is from my friend Ian Barnard, who I think you're going to get on the show at some point. We've been trying. Like, yeah. He, he's keen. So he does the Honest Designer show, too. He mm -hmm. said he would love to jump on. So um, the Grid Builder, I don't know if you've seen this product. I have. Yeah. So it's awesome, right? Mm -hmm. For everyone watching, um, it's basically a set of guidelines that you use to do digital lettering, which is huge right now. Everyone's on their iPad with Procreate doing yep. digital lettering. And so you can see here, it's got all these different things which just make it super easy to lay your lettering out and create nice typographic layouts. And you can see an the example there of how someone kind of fits their words within these guides. Yep. I've seen so, Ian demonstrate this on his Instagram channel or his yeah, Instagram talented account. Talented man, right? Yeah. The problem is I see it, I'm like, you make it look easy, Ian, and then when I do it, it's going to look like butt. <laughs> like 10 times as slow. And... But you know what? The thing is, at least it'll save me some time sucking. And That's I don't right. want to take a long time and suck. Just buy it. <laughs> Just buy it. Procreate. It's on my wish list. Boom. <laughs> Thing is, he's so humble as well. When we like, uh, we're awestruck by this, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, I just whipped it together." <laughs> is he English as well? He is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Okay. He's pretty close actually um, to where we live. So yeah, looking again, talent market unique. Mm -hmm. Talented, super talented guy, right? You've seen his Instagram. Unbelievable yeah. talent in the uh, digital lettering field. Market huge because basically anyone that does digital lettering has jumped all over this because it's super super useful and there's a lot of digital letterers out there so it's a big market and that trends on the up so you know market completely covered and unique again there was nothing like this this was a real brainwave when he brought it out people's jaws hit the floor because they're like damn this is so simple why didn't someone think of this but it just didn't exist so as soon as he put it out there again it blew up it was one of these really really big hitting products so this formula really seems to kind of drop over anything that's a blockbuster runaway success. Yes. Now cue all the creators like uh, personalization <laughs> portrait kit coming soon <laughs> as you talk about this. Oh, okay. Attack right, of so the let's, Clones let's, are coming. Yeah. So let's go back because people mm -hmm. do re rip these uh, things off incredibly quickly. Mm -hmm. But for example, there's a bunch of portrait creators out there. But what happens is they're often talented, but they're nowhere near as talented as Lisa. So the talent bit just isn't quite as strong as she had it. The market demand still pretty good because they're useful products, but she's already sold a bunch. And so most people interested in this, they've already bought it, right? Yeah. So the market demand isn't what it was. Mm -hmm. And then the unique bit, it's not unique at all. So it's missed out on that, like, wow, this is so innovative and new. And it, everyone kind of looks they're like, well, it's cool, but it's basically a rip off of that other person. Yeah. So that's why being a first mover, being original counts so much. And I've never seen um, a kind of knockoff version outdo the original. It's always the original which stands the test of time and maintains the most success. Really? Yeah, like consistently. That's reassuring. Yeah. So get your butt <laughs> out there and make something new and interesting, guys. So this is huge, right? How mm -hmm. to present your products. Your preview graphics, they are like your storefront. And we see this all the time. There will be kind of okay to good products that have stunning previews and they do incredibly well. Mm. And there's really, really good products and their previews are hideous and they flop. So it is crucial. Like no one's actually going to buy it because you can't really test these things out, right? Right. You, you, you decide if you like it and then you buy it and that's when you get to use it when you've actually bought it and downloaded it. So the previews do a lot of the selling for you. Yep. Especially because designers are so visual. Often they skim through the description and just look at the previews and they're like, yeah, that's for me. Mm -hmm. So here's the best steps for how to present your digital products. Actually show everything that's inside the product. This might sound super dumb, but so many people don't do this. So they will have a pack of like 25 gorgeous textures. And then you go on the preview graphics and it shows three of them. It's bizarre. And so it's like, what are you doing? There's so much more value in this, which you're just not bothering to show up. And so here's a little case study. This is by Tom Chalky at Vector Hut. And this was one of our collaborative products, actually. And it's the world's greatest vintage collection. And it's insanely huge. For anyone that's grabbed it, it's basically everything you could want that's vintage. And you can see here, there's a lot in it, right? So it's like wow. a thousand vintage illustrations. It's got seamless patterns. It's got all this kind of stuff. And I'm showing you, this is probably like 
one percent of the preview graphics when you go on the product page for this you literally your finger gets cramped from mm, scrolling mm -hmm. because he shows every little detail every illustration every pattern every part of it he shows in intense detail and so it's so worth actually showing every part of your product off next call out the product's transformational abilities or basically show what it can actually do so Here's a super uh, simple example. This is from Ian Barnard again. This is an old pack of his where you basically can easily apply watercolor textures to your mm. objects and your text. Really quick visual example being like, turn it from this to this. It's like before and after, right? But again, so many people don't bother to do that. And that simple visual step, people are like, okay, in a second, I understand how this product works and what I'm gonna get from it. Mm -hmm. Here's like a slightly more advanced um, example of this. This is from Artifacts Forge, which is uh, Jeremy. He's a good friend of ours. Mm -hmm. And he's vintage cross hatching brushes. Really beautiful. But again, this is a nice visual of, of, of like, okay, I can actually see the before and after and how this thing takes shape. And so many people don't bother to do this. They just slap it together and they're like, here's what's inside this product. Super boring, right? But this actually inspires you. It's like, oh, I can see how this would take shape if I was using it. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this one literally is an instructional guide on how to use the product. And you can see, kind of boring, mm -hmm. interest. Oh, oh, whoa, by step six, it's like really <laughs> vintage looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Yeah. So it's like a mini tutorial. Mm -hmm. um, and here's another example. This is Ian Barnard again, just super like easy. And you can have little diagrams. It's like literally click this layer. I have this. Go, and this is it. You have this? I have this. I use it. Yeah. There I you didn't go, know it right? was Ian, but oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's texture press, I believe. Yes, um, it is. Yeah. Super useful. But you probably never would have bought it if it was some hideous looking preview graphics that didn't actually show you what it was going to do. Right. You probably mm. saw this and were like, I want my text to look like that. So I'm going to buy it. Yeah. So you're basically saying people are shallow. They judge you on appearances. So play to that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. More or less. Right. <laughs> yeah. OK, so next up, highlight the product's best features. Again, very, very key. So many people don't do it. So Ian Barnard, again, I'm showing, showing love to Ian today, but you can literally magnify and call out key elements of your products. Mm -hmm. You know, what is best about it? And here's, here's another example. This is that vintage pack again. So it's showing zoom ins being like, look at this at full resolution. With a little oh, magnifying yes, product. nice. You know, yeah, I, so, I want to talk about this a little bit because I do buy things also because we have a Shutterstock account. Sometimes the thumbnail looks pretty good and then you download this thing, you're like, oh, that's hideous. <laughs> That's hideous. <laughs> and I didn't realize it was so chunky. Yeah. But in the thumbnail, it looked fine. And I just didn't have time to sit there and like zoom in. So you zooming in saves a person a click. They get to yeah, decide right away. It's all, um, it's like um, addressing objections, right? So imagine you've bought something in the past mm -hmm. and at full resolution, it was kind of blurry. You might mm -hmm. look at something like this and be like, mm, I don't know, because it might be like that other bad product. But you're like, oh no, that's super sharp. So it's like kind of addressing. Um, those objections before people even have them as well. Yeah. And I want to tell you guys a little story uh, related to this, okay? Years ago, we were doing a main title for a kid's movie. And we had done it at a certain resolution. And the editor, who was our client at that point in time, didn't realize they were 3D titles. So there was dimension and reflections on it. So when we delivered the final files after rendering everything out, he freaked out. He said, why'd you guys switch the titles? We didn't switch the titles. They were always 3D. He's like, I don't like it 3D. I thought it was always 2D. And we, it was just a, a giant thing that blew up. I don't think we worked with them after that. So real life story right there. <laughs> that sucks. But yeah, in a product world, like transparency is your friend, right? Yeah. That's going to help you make sales because there's no nasty surprises. I think it's just about managing expectations, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's just being, yeah, being honest, being mm -hmm. transparent. So another example, it's just calling out, you know? It's like, look at this. It's made with real chalk. Like, look at what it can do for you. It's just calling out those features like any traditional advert would. But for some reason, when people are selling stuff online, they get lazy. They're like, again, here's, here's a brief look at what's inside my product. They don't actually sell it. Mm. I think this is one of those oxymorons, right? Where it's like, it's real chalk digital texture. <laughs> 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 like real artificial flavor. No, so the original base was chalk. It's not just digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. got it. Um, Cool. So also, this is this is your favorite, Chris. This is mock-up. So show brand applications and real-world uses for the product. That's right. This is huge. Because by doing this, you basically inspire people. You trigger their imagination for how they could use it. Without mm -hmm. that, even if you get all the other stuff right, people might go through it. And it's like, okay, but how is that going to apply to me? 
So looking at this example, this is from Callie Hegstrom. Again, one of our best-selling artists, super talented, makes these amazing hand-drawn fonts. Buttermilk Farmhouse, right? So this is the, the cover image. That's like the, the front image. Mm -hmm. But then she's showing it off in these kinds of mock-ups and how you could use it. So she, she got this kind of stuff here. It's like really kind of charming, fits that like farmhouse vibe, but also shows it on business cards. So having that variety in there, it's like, okay, well, I might not want to use it for that, but actually I need some business cards. So you're just showing all these kind of disparate ways of using it that are mm -hmm. going to inspire people into buying it. Have you seen this pack at all, Chris? I have not. Okay, so this is Lisa Glanz again. Mm -hmm. This is one that we collaborated with her on. Um, so it was months and months and months ago, like eight months or something. We we're on a call. It was like, what are we going to build? And then we kind of came up with this idea. Basically, it lets you build a whole digital world. It is huge, right? But she's the master of showing how you can actually use this stuff in real life. Mm -hmm. so you can see here, you've got like the cute elephant, all that kind of stuff. But on the left, you can see ahoy it's a boy right so this is like a birth kind of announcement card she's showing how you could actually make something tactile out of this digital bag mm -hmm. same here you got the little baby grow so if you want to kind of create cute stuff like that that's another real world example same thing same thing here with the uh, pillowcase yeah you know real example because people make these stuff you know people are on etsy all these different places they're selling pillowcases they're selling mugs so when you actually show your digital product being used to make that stuff that's going to inspire them yeah i, I love her mock-ups because it, it includes three-dimensional things and she's helping you figure out how else can i use this so if i pay 100 bucks for this i can actually go make some pillows and make my money back right away and I like that she also inserted maybe her hand into the shot and the other one where she moved elements around. So it communicates an idea without even words, literally like move stuff around. Yeah. Mm. And she's great because normally people kind of just break him up with like um, slabs of previews. She, she weaves them through. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's kind of just like jutting in from the edge. So you scroll through the whole product, getting a feel for it. And all these examples are kind of woven into that process. Talented lady. Um, so also this is huge, like 99.9% .9 of people don't do this, but people love it. So tell the story of how you actually made the product, i.e. the thought and the passion that you put into it. So going back to the vintage pack, this is Tom Jorky we partnered with. He spent over two and a half thousand dollars on all these old vintage books and resources that he then scanned in, spent 28 hours scanning, hundreds of hours editing, digitalizing, extracting them and vectorizing them and so on, and countless amounts of caffeine. Showing mm -hmm. that, and he even embedded a short video on this product page showing him scanning it in. And this, this does a few things. Like, first of all, it shows the labor. It shows the love that went into the product. So people look at it, they're like, oh, this hasn't just been thrown together. They get an idea for the quality. And people love that insight into like the behind the scenes that went into it. Yeah. Now, I, I can, I, can we hit pause there for a second and just talk to you about this? Because yeah. Dustin mentioned this too on the stream that we did with him in that you can go to a catalog of vintage images that are, I guess, expired for copyright reasons and you can scan yeah, them like in. Yes, yes. So then some people had a really bad reaction to that and I can understand why. So I'd love to just take a second to talk about this and why is it mm -hmm. okay for you to scan in a book that somebody else scanned in and printed and then re-digitize and are you creating anything of value to people? How, how do you respond to that? Yeah, I think Dustin covered it pretty well for the mm -hmm. people that caught that. He talked about when they were literally in like a, a wood shop chucking away bits of wood, um, you know, into the trash and a designer came along and was like, can I scan these in and sell it? So I think the whole idea is it's something from way back in the past um, where no one has any particular like legal ties to it. You know, mm -hmm. it's in the public domain and then it's just turning it into a different medium the same way people are like scanning in people people get old maps and stuff and then turn that into textures you can use in vintage artwork the whole like plethora of designers out there wouldn't get to use these beautiful vintage things in their work if it wasn't digitalized at some point mm -hmm. and I, I really think like if it's out there in the public domain like obviously never plagiarize never steal from anyone mm -hmm. um, but public domain's a, a beautiful thing you know nasa very deliberately put out right. public domain imagery um, and that's great. And designers can capitalize on that and photo manipulate it and do amazing stuff with right. it. And good on NASA for sharing that. I think. Yeah. Well, it's it's a government thing. So I, I don't know. Nobody owns it, I guess. Right. It's owned yeah, by everybody. Exactly. It's owned by us. We already paid once for tax. Yeah. 
um so yeah same pack like he this is really cool i don't know if you can read that in the bottom corner but no. he basically showed his dad who contributed to the pack um he's been an artist most of his life and he wanted to be part of the pack so this is him like drawing vintage elements which he then included mm. and you know what i mean that little glimpse into his world makes it stand out so much more than all the other packs out there where it's like here's some flowers yep so then social proof reviews if you haven't got any ask so here's a look at ian's grid builder what he did he gave some early free copies to friends and then he showed off their work using it and had these testimonials these quotes from them it's basic marketing right mm -hmm. sharing them. but no one does it like we sell thousands of products there's probably like you know i can count on one hand how many people actually do this but it always seems to help sales i see and then finally make it look pretty create a brand around it and realize the top level image to cover is everything so in terms of uh this, this is a super fun pack uh with the artifacts forge that we made so this is a paper craft pack and this guy spent literally weeks cutting out bits of paper and filling his house and scanning them in and creating this kind of awesome stuff but rather than have a super boring cover image he's brought it to life he's made the whole thing paper and you know what i mean you, you give it a brand so um i see people where it's like we're selling the half tones pack and there's other people where it's like we're selling horrific half tones and they brand it up in like a horror theme and all the imagery fits around that oh so giving, giving it that visual theme a little personality yeah give it personality because you don't want to blend in it's like okay another person who made some paper textures that's boring but mm -hmm. when you do something like this it completely stands out yeah, and I think with that little tip, I, I think that was interesting because the horrific, what did you say, halftone pack? Uh, yeah. That's one way to take one thing that you're really good at and then dissect it a million different ways so that you could have 10, 20 products based off of the same skill set. Hey, yeah, Matthew. I, I, I see it all the time, and Dustin is a genius with this stuff. You know, He does really well in his store. He never releases like, oh, the halftones pack. Mm -hmm. That's boring. He brands it up in a really interesting way, and so do many of the best people. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is Artifacts Forge again, got the finest uh, vintage. Who doesn't want to see an octopus in a top hat, right? <laughs> it's awesome. So, <laughs> oh, that's the same top hat that we saw before. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so it all ties in and that's it. You've got this consistent visual tie in throughout the product previews. And that's a really powerful thing because it starts to feel like a, a branded project instead of a random hodgepodge. Mm -hmm. And this again, super strikes. So he, he literally made a little matchbook effect for the preview graphic and it's really stunning finally color engages so realize that if you go bolder if you go more colorful not every time there are some more muted product uh, previews which do very well still because the product rocks but generally you know i put together some of our top sellers here they're pretty bold right they catch the eye that they stand out because people realize the context that people are going to be scrolling through a lot of these things and so they want to they want to grab that that visitor's eye and the top tip is if you create products, figure out where you're gonna sell them. That might be a platform like Design Cuts, for example, and then screen capture it and drop your proposed preview graphics into one of these grids, like the, the search results and see how it stands out, see mm -hmm. how it feels because that context is everything. Mm -hmm. So finally, go the extra mile and uh, we're nearly done, Chris, I promise. <laughs> no, no, you're doing great. Cool, man. Um, so yeah, go the extra mile. You saw like with me hospitalize myself, this is my whole ethos in life, right? Why be lazy when you can go the extra mile? Like I'm obsessed with how far you can push things. I encourage our team to do this, you know, with customer service. We do it with product quality. We do it with everything. It's like, you know, why rest there if you can take it a step further? And I think that's the ultimate key when it comes to making products. First of all, size matters, right? <laughs> so. When I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Okay. So size matters. Yes, quality is the most important thing. But when you think about boxes, right, a the, the best heavyweight in the world is going to knock out the best middleweight in the world. It's just the reality of it. They're both amazing and they're both going to make a lot of money, but the heavyweight's going to win and the heavyweight is normally going to make more money. And the same exact thing applies for products. So when you look at some of these big hitters, 
there are very, you know, there's a huge number of micro versions of these products out there. So there's portrait creators, which are much, much smaller. There's vintage collections where it might be 30 vintage illustrations, but this one has thousands and fonts and like textures and everything under one roof. So generally, if you've got the quality down, adding a fair amount of quantity always does tend to pay off. Um, I'm not saying every time, like for example, the grid builder, you know, that's quite a nice small product and it's just super useful and so it does well, but equally the product that has kind of bonuses and, and a bunch of extra stuff in it tends to outperform something that's smaller and simpler. Authenticity and quality. I don't know if you've experienced this, Chris, with like any past products you've downloaded, but I hate when people have like a horrible digital fake. And the classic example is gold textures. The number of gold textures that we haven't let into our marketplace because someone's gone and taken a bad photograph of their stainless steel fridge and then put a horrible yellow overlay over it in Photoshop. And then they're like the authentic gold texture pack. And it's not, it looks really fake and really horrible. So for me, authenticity is everything. If you're getting rust textures, for example, then go visit like an abandoned train station and you know take all these authentic rust pictures. If you're doing gold, like go somewhere where you can have like gold leaf or like real gold that you can actually capitalize on because everyone else is gonna be faking it. And if you're the one that's had that authentic um, investment of effort, mm -hmm. that's... So that, I already have an excuse for you. If you get caught breaking into a bank, you're like, you know, Tom told me I got to get real gold <laughs> textures yeah. and I have no interest in actually taking this. I just wanted a photo. <laughs> you yeah. the first I mean, there's uh, some irony to this. I'm going to make $49 products and I have a lot of gold laying around. <laughs> <laughs> just cause, just cause. Gold leaf, gold sheets, something like that, right? Go to like 50 cents house or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, this is, um, we, we teamed up with Joanna Fallon to create the Chalk Extravaganza pack. And this is because we saw what was out there in the market and everyone was doing pretty horrible fakes when it came to digital chalk. Like they were literally just applying these noise filters and it really Ugh. didn't look realistic at all, right? Yeah. It was horrible to work with. Joe is not only a, a digital artist, but her full-time living is a chalk artist. She literally goes all over England doing chalk murals and that kind of thing. And so we like, right, you're perfect to create a digital chalk bag. So she spent months creating this where she would literally, like she went through so many packets of chalk and would scan it in, digitalize it and just got so, so precious over it. But it's completely authentic and she knows what real chalk looks like. So as she was putting all this stuff together, she'd be comparing it to her actual physical work and seeing whether it uh, and she knows like how chalk you know looks in light and, and and she's got all these details like you can kind of see um on the right there like a little splatter of chalk dust mm -hmm. so she all these kind of finesse touches because she, it, you know she's authentic she's an expert in her craft she's not someone who just goes i want to make a chalk pack to make money so i'm going to fake it quickly because mm. she's a chalk expert and does this for a living she knows what chalk looks like she can make a chalk pack matthew i have an idea for a new texture pack it's called the crap texture pack because I know what crap looks like so I'm gonna make the crap texture pack I've spent a lot of time around crap okay just kidding keep going <laughs> well Chris I'm gonna have to come back to my Venn diagram there. <laughs> it's hot everybody wants it trust me because everybody's using yeah. it right now just look at your design look at your screen right now and you're like oh Chris is right it is. there's a lot of crap around here <laughs> ouch okay keep going uh, cool so finally bonuses extras and surprises um, here's an example, right? When you get the uh, personalized portrait creator, which I went through before, Lisa took the time to create all these PDF guides. So you get it and it literally it gives you a nice thank you. And then it walks you through exactly how to use it. Like layer by layer, it's like start here, do this. And it just holds your hand through the whole process. And that like ties a nice neat bow around the whole thing because you want people to stick around. You want them to buy your future products, kind of follow your store. All that yes, kind we of do want stuff. them to buy our future products, yes. <laughs> so that's not going to happen if they download it and have a horrible experience. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about the extra touches, your files should be incredibly well organized. You should provide bonus guides like this, which give them quick tutorials. It's all these extra touches. And not only that, but do it properly. So we see some people that have guides like this, but it's basically a text edit file. Oh, I've seen those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, so I know. 
but so they'd be like step one do this and it looks horrible and bearing in mind they're selling to visual people they're selling to designers i was like what are you doing that's gonna like disgust them right i just heard your reaction there chris so <laughs> um <laughs> take the time to actually put care and effort and go that extra mile with this kind of thing because it's such a nice way to continue your branding every little experience with your product should be beautifully put together and branded and so don't invest all the time in making the thing and then get lazy with the previews. Don't invest the time in making the thing and creating great previews and then get lazy with the helpful documents. You know, the whole thing should be done with care. Mm -hmm. And I also mentioned uh, before the slide surprises. Again, send your customers away floating. So provide the helpful documents, all that kind of stuff. But if you want to throw in like a bonus hidden folder where it's got even more stuff, and say, you know what, I appreciate you buying this so much. I included some extra products that I didn't even mention on the product page, but it's here is a, a surprise thank you for getting it. That blows people away. But again, no one bothers to put in that extra effort. Lovely. Cool. <laughs> is that it? Yeah, so quick, th this is a recap for everyone. Okay. I don't know if you can, oh, uh, okay. okay, I was doing my recap, but you do your recap. Go okay. Uh, oh my God, that's <laughs> a lot of small type. Yeah, I'm gonna lose my eyesight on this one. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right, so recap, basically, play, think of the Venn diagram, play to your skills and talents, identify underserved markets with a strong market demand, and find out find ways to stand out and be truly unique and be that first mover. Also, um, think in terms of quality and quantity when you're putting your products together. So if it can be fantastic and a bit larger and you can add bonuses and that kind of thing, fantastic. Be authentic, so put in the extra, extra time and care to create something that's really you know, real and tangible and you went that extra mile and include bonus values. So these surprises, these helpful documents, all that kind of thing. In terms of the previews, realize how much your previews matter. They make or break your sales, so invest the time. I literally know some of these top creators, they will spend weeks or months creating the product. They spend the same amount of time packaging it up and making it look nice because they know how important that is. So within those, show every piece of value in the product, show it all off, show how the product's gonna help people, highlight the best features of the product, show brand applications, normally through mock-ups, tell the story of how the product came together and, and why you wanted to make it, share social proof, reviews and testimonials and examples of people using it, make it look super pretty and brand up in a nice way, and then generally make it bold and colorful and see how it's gonna look in its final home, in a marketplace, on your website, wherever you're selling it, make sure it's gonna look good in context. But basically, the umbrella message here is go the extra mile because it's less crowded there. Mm -hmm. Well done. Hey, how about nice, a round man. of applause for that, you guys? Woo. Yeah. Oh, I need to take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> well done, oh, Tom. I'm exhausted now. <laughs> <laughs> you victory lap? Did you catch the roses in your mouth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Tom. There, there was this comment, and I'm gonna throw it at you. It's like, so you're yeah. talking about key art and presentation and how important it is. Derek, what about your keynote deck, there, Tom? Some people give me a little hard time. Like, hey, how about putting a little design sauce on the on the keynote deck? Or maybe <laughs> this is just a rough draft. What do you think? Um, I'm gonna say partly I wanted to match the features, lovely black and white. Uh, <laughs> uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, before you say that, let's let's see, uh, let me find some graphics here. Yes, I like that you're doing that, but here's what the future's black and white graphics look like. Oh, stunning, I know, I know. Come on, Aaron. Um, so guys, if you, if you want right. the truth, it's because I don't have a minute to breathe at the minute uh, running my company, um, but I wanted to take two yeah. days to put it together, and I did that. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Minute to make it look nice, I'm afraid. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Let, let's just be. <laughs> and I, I knew someone was going to mention that. They're going to mention it. You're talking to a channel full of designers. You know what's going to happen. And I would not be a designer if I didn't bring it up too. So there it is. Sometimes you guys need to realize this. Do we value beauty or do we value information? Ideally, given time, energy, and effort, it would be both beautiful and informative. But if I had to choose, I just like the information. And we can imagine it in whatever typeface you guys want. All right? I'm just bringing that up. Okay. It, Let's do comments and questions and criticisms and kudos and whatever concerns you might have. I'm out of CK sounds. Um, <laughs> Jonah. 
Jonah, abandon me. Uh, Jonah, abandon you. No, so I got, I got plenty. Of, I got plenty okay, of okay. questions. Matthew's here. got it done. Matthew. Yeah. Oh, that's Hold my on, job. Let me bump up Matt's light because it died. One second. Oh, it's all right. You can. Uh, no, no. Oh, this light. Yeah, just cut to me, man. Just okay. cut to him, uh, uh, or, or not. <laughs> okay, I'll carry the show then. All right. How did you guys feel about Tom's presentation? Does this give you ideas on what you could do to market your services or products? I mean, because he mentioned these tips apply to whether or not you're selling digital products or you're doing online product or real world products. Like, are you doing the mockups? Are you telling the success story, the before and after? Are you including testimonials and all kinds of things? Are you doing all that kind of stuff? If you're not, Aaron. You, you hit the doors in my face, Aaron. Oh, no. What's the point? What's the point? Just do what you got to do. I'm talking anyways here. I, I picked up a lot of valuable tips, and I might even have to do a recap on top of Tom's recap just because I want to show off my typesetting skills. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think Matthew is back. Matthew, what are the questions? Just read them. Don't even worry about your camera. Yeah, okay. So um, <clears throat> I think when you did the Venn diagram, it was very helpful. I think a few people had issues with the uniqueness and trying to figure out their uniqueness because they look at the market out there all of these different uh, platforms including yours and it seems very noisy and crowded do you have yep. any specific tips that somebody might do some research or how might they find something that's unique to them that they could uh that they could start looking into yeah that is a great question so first of all with the venn diagram realize you don't have to nail all three to the extreme if you do that you have a better chance of being like a runaway success yes but equally just bear it in mind right so if you're super talented there's people creating stuff which is similar to stuff that's out there and it does very well for them they make a living from it but mm -hmm. it just might not blow up the same way as some of those huge hitters that i that i showed but a great tip is see what's doing well and then try and find a slightly different angle on it mm. so guys have probably seen right these brush fonts that kind of thing yep. they were huge and and they still are but what some designers started doing is they started doing the SVG fonts. So you know what I mean mm, by that, yep. where it has texture built into the font. Mm -hmm. And that was like a slight pivot on an, an existing idea. And for the people that move very quickly on that, like for example, Sam Parrott we worked with at Sales Studios, he became hugely popular because that was something more unique. It wasn't being done everywhere. And so it was a nice variant, but it equally he had the talent for it and the market demand was there. But soon enough, what happened was everyone followed him in. And so you have to keep moving the goalposts. And I know that might sound kind of stressful, but that's the reality of the market. That's the reality of design, business, anything, right? Mm -hmm. People, so, you know, constantly being innovative and evolving is key, um, but you can absolutely see what is out there performing already and just try different angles at it. Yeah, you need to be innovative. That's what you need to do, <laughs> okay? All right. Is there anything that you do to help validate your idea prior because i think that's a great tip right you do the research first see what's out there and then do yours a little bit better or your unique pov on that same thing but is there any way like if you're creating your own product are there ways that you could offer to help validate your idea before either you spend a whole lot of time or before you even release it in the market yeah 100 percent. so i mentioned before um getting some free early copies think of it like a beta right beta mm -hmm. versions mm -hmm made a product or you're halfway through a product, some of these top creators I just mentioned, they will share it with their friends. They'll share it with some of their community and they'll share like the prototype version. And that's great because you can see the ones that people go nuts over and lose their minds and the ones where they're more apathetic over it. So that is a great tip and that will let you do some of the stuff I touched on where you get early reviews, examples of work, testimonials to weave into the preview graphics, but you also get the validation happening at that phase. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I love that. We, we do a lot of beta testing too on our products. So that's great to see that that would work for these products as well. Matthew, it's, it's beta testing? Beta testing. Sorry, I got <laughs> You say beta, I say beta, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Okay, that's cool. I got a question for you and this one's going to hit you right in the face, I think. Virtual okay. Me is saying, hey man, isn't this all like hitting rock bottom? Isn't the mark suit, market, the creative market product whatever tutorial <laughs> i can't even speak now are, are we at the rock bottom like aren't we oversaturated in this space already yes yeah, so one of my team asked me this the other day mm -hmm. and i think absolutely not because people say that every year forget digital design products people say that in the world they're like all the good inventions have been invented all the good music's been made but people keep coming up with great stuff right some of those examples that grid builder that was released pretty recently and that is incredible and so as long as people are creative, as long as creativity exists, I think, no, there's always opportunity for new ideas and fresh approaches. Well, let me ask you a question. And if you feel like this is uh, 
something you don't want to answer, just say I don't want to answer that, okay? Can I, yeah, sure. can I get financial with you or no? Can you what? Can I ask you a financial question about design cuts or no? Oh, um, I guess uh, I'll, I'll see what it is and let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell by your uncomfortableness or discomfort, maybe we should. I'm going to ask this then. If somebody yeah. is saying that the market is, is hit saturation, we're over, it's done, it's, then year over year, are you guys growing in gross sales? I'll ask it this way. Or okay, ha have you it. hit a plateau? Are you in the decline? Where are you guys at? We're growing nicely. Percentage-wise? Um, somewhere between like feeling happy and startup <laughs> Silicon Valley unicorn. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. So the market basically, is... Basically, yeah, basically there's a lot of uh, opportunity and abundance out there. And I think a lot of this comes down to mindset, right? If you're the guy who's going to sit there and be like, you know what, like everything has been done, it's too busy. You could say that about anything. You could say that about YouTubing or doing podcasts, right? The future yeah. hasn't been for that long and you guys could have been head down like this isn't going to work for us everyone's done it but you didn't you came on the scene you did it fresh and interesting and you you took off yeah you know what i'm going to create a new graphic right now i just wrote a thought deep thoughts by chris doe right here <laughs> okay so there are people we know this and and we always wonder like what is the difference between a successful person and a near to do well well the near to do well sits there and something comes out in the market and it's kind of interesting like nah not ready and then it starts to catch on. It's like, eh, it's too trendy. It's a fad. And then it's so saturated, it's over. And they sit there and they do it with every single thing as you were saying. Not ready, too trendy. Oh my God, it's over. Right? So true. Right? So that's so what they're true. doing. So you could sit there and say, well, what is it that the future is doing? We're on YouTube. There are many, too many YouTubers already, but we're doing just fine. Well, we're <laughs> going to do classes and tutorials on how to design. Well, there's too many places that do that. And we're doing just fine. So let's get over it. Get over it. And a lot of times, I think, when people throwing out a little negativity, I don't even want to say hate, they're just questioning, probably from a really good place. It's because they're scarred. They're scarred to just go out there and do something and risk failure, that it might not work. And they're like, ah, oh, I knew it, I knew it. So that critical inner voice is yelling at them all the time. It'll never work, you've never done it. It just keeps going louder and louder, and then they just don't do anything with their lives. And that's mm -hmm. sad for me, right? I completely, I completely agree. But to layer on top of that, I layer think it. you have to get uh, layer it up. <laughs> I think you also have to get realistic about the market, right? So yeah. I would love to say that doesn't matter, but it completely does. So saturation is a real thing. Doesn't mean it's impossible, but it might be harder. So I know there some people hark back to the golden years where they could put a font on my fonts or somewhere, <laughs> sell it for a thousand bucks, and become like a millionaire. That's that never happened in the history of fonts. Come on, are you serious? That's a story. Um, yeah, I, I, I know really? someone that made a font that sold four hundred thousand dollars. One font? Yeah. One Was font. this Helvetica? Nope. You probably wouldn't even have heard of it. Like, really? <laughs> oh, like, Comic Sans. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I made uh, almost made Matthew spit out his water on that comment. Okay. <laughs> All right, you keep going. I, and I, I, and when I say you, you probably haven't heard of it. I don't like you. Obviously, know design. My point is, you know design so well. This is a more obscure fund mm -hmm. that still made that much money. So mm -hmm. there were definitely some golden years, but now that particular creator has to come to terms with the fact that things have moved on. Um, you know, you can't sell stuff at the same price point, and right, right. All that kind of thing. And that's the market. And same way, we can get head down and pessimistic about that, and like woe is me or we can adapt and move with the times and find a way to make it work because there's people out there who are killing it right now and more right. people than I want to give a shout out to a friend of mine, Tony Alves. I think that's Tony Alves. I don't know. Well, you're a friend of mine now. The <laughs> ROI on my time spent here is crazy good. I think he's talking about this show, but I, I also interpret it as I've said this before. People don't pay me for design. They're not buying your, your mock-ups. What they're doing is they're buying their time back. From themselves essentially yeah. i'm gonna pay you so much money so that i don't have to spend twenty thousand hours scanning in books and falling asleep and drinking 35 cups of coffee just to get something done i'll pay you 49 i'll pay 149 dollars because my time's worth more so here's what we need to do as creative people as creative people we need to realize we're supposed to be in the clouds thinking about the ideas understanding what's right what's appropriate for a brand not necessarily scouring the junkyard for that right rust texture but if that's your jam, you go do that. That's okay too. But for everybody else, think about how to work smarter, not harder. Okay?
Yeah, so true. And I was guilty of that. So before starting design cards, like years and years ago when I was a younger designer, I would be getting this sketchy as hell free fonts that were super, you know, they were like missing a full stop in them and just kind of falling apart. And I'd be spending hours or days trying to find that perfect free texture and all that kind of stuff because I just refused to pay for anything. I was like, no, premium resources suck. Yeah. I've done a complete 180 for all the reasons you just said because yeah. I started valuing my time. I was like, this is nuts. Like, yeah. you know, I, I'm happy to spend one hour of my hourly rate to save myself three days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to do a little experiment here. There's uh, almost 400 people watching this live, and it's growing by the minute. I, I don't know how many of you guys are new. So first of all, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the future. And if you are, can you just say me or I'm new? And just so we can see who's new in the channel, and then hopefully we'll see how many new people Tom has brought into our channel here. Ooh, that's yeah, a, that's a good experiment. A little experiment there. Matthew, <laughs> I think it's your turn to ask another question. I got plenty of intelligent questions for you. <laughs> that's why I'm here. That's why you're here. <laughs> so um, earlier we were talking about validation and all that good stuff. And, you know, I'm thinking a lot of our audience that's watching right now, maybe they have a very small following or they don't have a lot of uh, quote unquote fame. And they're just wondering, do you have to have a big audience in order to succeed on a platform like that? Because I'm sure it helps. But have, do you have any case studies or a story of somebody who maybe doesn't have a huge Instagram following or wherever it may be that has done successfully on your platform? Mm. Most of them, wow. to be honest, because um, that's why platforms like us exist in the first place. You need an audience, and so you either have your own audience or you use other people's audiences or mm-hmm. platforms like Design Cuts. And so most people that sell their products with us, they're not promoting that to their audience some of them do it which is great and thank you to them but most of them it's like a passive income thing right they put it on our platform so we make them sales Mm. and that's just how it's set up so yeah we're actually trying to bring exposure because they know we've got a bigger audience than they do right tom tom i gotta gotta ask you a question here uh do you do a lot of public speaking uh none none why okay i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you a little hot tip Hot tip. Okay. We're, all, we're like an hour into our stream here and we got to make sure people keep watching. When Matt asked you that question, I think you should give him like some twisted upside down answer that are, oh my, oh, that's where he went with that. So when Matt said, how many people who don't have a big following actually do well in your platform? You're like, absolutely all of them or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like, draw it out. Give us some drama, Tom. The dramatic Give us the, the British drama. <laughs> Let's get innovative about our answer. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? <laughs> uh, okay, okay, I got, I got some quick questions here. I think we have, this is a highly engaged audience that's watching right now, so can we just power through the answers? I'm going to give you a question and as fast as possible, knock them out, okay? Okay, man. Let's Are you it. ready? You're right, okay. Uh, I don't have ready. the Jeopardy music, but here we go. <laughs> uh, David Coe asks, will design cuts offer motion design templates? Probably, at some point. <laughs> what kind of middle of the road answers? Okay, when can we expect it then? <laughs> Uh, well, build the suspense. Next couple of years, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Coming sometime in the future. Okay, guy. Johnson, I would say I would say one to two years. One to two years. So, twenty twenty one, when motion industry is dead, the templates are coming out. All right, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're waiting for it to die. Guy Johnson's like, you did a great job on this. A lot of valuable information. Are you going to post the PDF summary of your presentation somewhere later? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll send it to you guys. Send you it to it. us. Yes, yeah. that's how we'll do it. Okay. See, <laughs> there's benefits to being the future, and we'll we'll share it to the the uh, what is it? The pro? No, not the pro community. We'll post it up somewhere. Yeah, it'll Just be available. Sustaining on... members, we'll get the deck. <laughs> that's how we're gonna do it. It'll be on uh, Design Cuts for twenty nine ninety nine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no, that's the big one. That's the full one. This I'm is just the intro. I'm Matthew, hit him with a question. Pricing. How do you determine pricing for your product? Oh, Ooh. good question. Ooh. That is a great question. Um, Pricing, again, I think you have to kind of go based on the market and not get emotional or romantic. When people get tied up and they're like, but I worked so hard on this and I'm telling you it's worth this much. And Mm -hmm. it's like, but there's 10 similar-ish products of a similar, you know, volume and quality. um, And they're selling for half of what you are. Then you're probably going to miss the mark. And 
you need to realize there's a, a sweet spot. So you don't want to go too high. You don't want to go too low. Some people brand themselves as a more premium offering and that works out great for them. Others are kind of more affordable and that's great. Um, but there's definitely like a range, right? And you just do that by paying attention to what's out there. If you're in a bubble, then it's like, it's not going to work for you. If you're not, if, if, if you're too blinkered with it, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And then I guess to give us an idea on your platform, what's the cheapest product and the most expensive product? Uh, so the cheapest is like pretty cheap, like $6 or something. Mm -hmm. Some people seem to love making those products. Most expensive, I think 200, 250 bucks. Oh, okay. So it's not, it's not crazy, like, but our, our audience, they're quite price conscious because we're known for having stuff for the cheapest prices. So mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense that they maybe skew a bit lower. Mm -hmm. And then, so uh, earlier you were mentioning about you guys have the audience, obviously you're the prime real estate and that's why designers come to you. How do you guys market to uh, your audience or how, you know, how do you market to, to get sales for your artist? I designers? know, I see it. I see your ads on Facebook. I see affiliate promotions. So people who are who love your products, who believe in it, you have a, a pretty amazing program too. People sign up to be an affiliate of yours, right? Yeah, and like some of the coolest names in the industry. Like who? Like Chris Spooner, Lauren mm -hmm. Hom, mm -hmm. people like that. Is Ian Paget an affiliate partner? Yeah. Yeah. So some, you know, look, if you like something, you want to share it with people and an affiliate program is a great way to get the word out. How else mm -hmm. do you do? Do you do marketing? Do you take out ads or do you do anything unusual? Um, I, th I think like we take the the standard things, email marketing, ads, affiliate, but we just like like in my presentation. I always want to see how far we can push it. Right. Yeah. So like like this, I'm here today. I, I primarily want to bring value, but we hooked up a really cool thing for your viewers because <laughs> we're right. creative that are being bog standard, right? Look at that. So meta right now, Matthew. Love it. We're swimming <laughs> in a meta soup right now. All right, I want to comment on something. I think virtual me is trying to be funny. Trying to be funny, so I'm going to take him down right now. He's like, did Picasso sell templates before he severed off his ear? I think you're thinking about Van Gogh and not Picasso. <laughs> Picasso has all his ears, so Modin, burn. Oh, no, all right. This. <laughs> That's the one I can burn. That's it. Let's uh, keep going. Okay, so I have a, a quick question. Maybe if you could do the, the quick steps on this. Uh, how does one person get onto design cuts? Like, what, what are the quick steps to get on there? Literally, um, email our team, but I never want to annoy anyone. It's never nice to say no, but like, we have to stick to our values. And mm -hmm. like I say, we work with like the top 1%. We're like the Ivy League college of design marketplaces it's not a free-for-all so mm -hmm. um yeah email us would be super nice super friendly but we can't just say yes for the sake of it you know you have to hit a certain bar of quality you have mm -hmm. to be really really good yeah. and do you have any particular metrics or like check boxes that you say must hit these things so i know if it's valuable uh, for your audience or for your platform honestly no like we have someone whose job is like design curator mm -hmm. um and design is so subjective, right? I'm sure you guys get to see work all the time. Right. Some of it love and others you're like, mm, they're not quite there yet. Yeah. Right. Our um, friend and pro member David Co is asking, what percentage do artists make per sales, percentage wise? Yeah, sure. So it's uh, it's generally 50, 50, yeah. which um, I know, I think that's similar on like my fonts and Vado, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. the difference with us is we do everything for them mm -hmm. so i think most other platforms like they have to handle a lot of the incoming customer service and really kind of invest a lot of time mm -hmm. with us our team do all of that mm -hmm. so they literally like you put your stuff on there and forget about it and we're there forget about them. it well, you, you forget do, about it you do the full white like, glove service <laughs> let me do the american <laughs> accent all right <laughs> my friend <laughs> yeah you do the full white glove service in that you repackage it you clean it up you make sure everything's nice and tidy you give them support advice it's not just dump your yeah. stuff here exactly it's yeah. ridiculous the amount of unscalable effort we put into um to each product but it really seems to pay off like their customers get a better experience with their products the customer service is mm -hmm. like better than they could provide themselves yeah so you're saying design cuts is re dick q less <laughs> ridiculous you guys all right matthew are there any other questions before we uh, wrap up the show 
No, I think uh, I think we hit all the major ones. These are these are all great questions and fantastic answers. And I wanted to say one thing that I personally learned from here that actually yes. is tangential was when you were talking about the thumbnail image for the product. That got me thinking about our own thumbnails for YouTube. Mm -hmm, me too. Because it was so great. Because you're saying that you have to overcome an objection. You have to tell them within one second or a few seconds what you're going to get if you were to click further because everybody's attention span is very very short mm -hmm. so i think this applies everywhere so if you're thinking about your behance or anything else like any place where you're trying to get somebody to click further your instagram you want them to click in and read more these are fantastic tips that you had for the thumbnails yeah i appreciate it and the context one is so huge if you're doing a youtube show search on youtube for design show see all the search results and then paste your proposed thumbnail amongst them and be like, how does that feel? Is it better or worse? Is that the one that draws my eye? Mm -hmm. And does it tell me what I might get on the other side if I decide to invest my time, invest my click? Yeah, you got it. All right. I do want to say this. This is a redemptive quality. This is a redemptive show. Virtual me after trying to mode us and all that stuff and got burned. He's like, is there anything I can click and buy? <laughs> yes, there is. You guys, if you're watching it, if you've made it all the way to the end of this really long, informative, entertaining, and very British filled episode, make sure you guys check the description down below down there somewhere. Down, there we go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> down there somewhere. Somewhere down here they're going to use this to edit forever and there then we'll have a link and we do appreciate it you guys because as of right now officially the future and design cuts we're an affiliate partner so if you guys love something check it out tom has actually built us a custom page where there's a massive bundle i would just start there mm -hmm. start with big all right go and, big and it's free what well how do we make money off free what are you doing? Don't, what kind of businessman are you? 50% of zero is still zero. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Tom, you're killing us. He's like, suck us. Oh, Chris, <laughs> oh my God. Let me talk to you about business advice later. <laughs> and you guys, check this out. Of course, there's the Honest Entrepreneurs podcast. I will be a guest there sometime in the future. So you guys can check us out there. And I'll let you guys know about that. It's honest, design, honest designers, man. We've got to honest have you on that. Honest, honest entrepreneurs is my personal one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I got that all messed up. Too many honest no, no, things okay. going on, you know? Honest all mistake. Right. Even though, even though <laughs> nice. you did the summary, even though you did the summary, I'm going to give you a summary on top of the summary because that's how we sums it up. All right. First of all, if you guys want to know more about Tom, the Brit, Ross, it's designcuts.com. It's at Tom Ross Media. That's your Insta Grizzle, right? Yep, that's it. Okay, thank goodness, because if I messed it up, I'd have to fix it right now. So here's a summary <laughs> on top of the summary, okay? You guys need to find your sweet spot. That's a mixture of talent, market demand, and what makes you unique. There's the word you and unique. And why key art, I'm just using a different term here, why key art is critical to your success. This is marketing, people are shallow, pull them in, and it's your digital storefront, and you gotta do it, because if you don't have them at hello, they have you at goodbye. Show everything in the product. Don't hide anything. There are no such secrets. Let them know every little nook and cranny of what it is that you offer, okay? Call out transformational abilities like the before and after results. This is true about even the service industry. If you help a client achieve a big result, tell that story. This is how they were. They had 100 customers. Now they have 2,000 customers thanks to what we were able to do. Zoom in on the details. That's for true for digital products and for creative services. Tell me what it is. Get into the nitty gritty. Also manage expectations, guys. Be upfront, be honest, honest entrepreneur, honest design show. It's all honest all the way. And what you want to do for your clients, as always, your potential customers, is to close the imagination gap. Show the applications of how your products might be used. Capture lightning in a bottle. Help them dream a little bigger. Then they will buy. Tell the story of how you made the product. Time and effort, slaving over things. Become a documentarian of your own work. You know what I'm talking about. Add testimonials and examples. This is a form of social proof. Again, you're closing the imagination gap. When you add testimonials, it says, these other people that I like and trust also use it. It must be safe. This is not a scam. It's good stuff. Put your personality in your product to stand out. That's marketing 101. Don't just call it halftones. Call it the creepy, scary Halloween halftones. Do something different and you will stand out. And you only need to stand out by half an inch, half an inch to be different. Drop your key art into the grid to test if it stands out. Drop your key art into YouTube thumbnail grids. Drop it in, 
test it, validate it. Uh, this is Tom, not me. Size matters. Quality first, <laughs> always. Quality first. But then add more. Real, not fake. Don't get arrested at the bank trying to steal their gold, but no fool's gold here. Okay? Add bonuses, extra surprises. This is how you go the extra mile. Don't get lazy. Don't be emotional and romantic when it comes to pricing. I have no issues with being emotional nor romantic. That's it, you guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. We love you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I would just want to give a big heartfelt thank you to all our sustaining members. You know who you are. We're going to be dropping some downloadable PDFs anytime, like, like now, really, like really soon. Thank you, Donuts, Donation. See you guys next time. We out of here. Have a great weekend, Matthew. Thank you. Jonah, and especially Aaron for cutting this episode. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Oh, man. Oh, you peaked there on that roof. Appreciate it, guys.